friends. So today's video is going to be a fun one. Uh, I am going to review some products for you. My local art supply store in Denver, HR Mininger, reached out to me and asked me to review some products for them. I was more than happy to do so because I love playing with new stuff and let me tell you, they gave me some fun things. They gave me a little goodie bag full of cool little products, most of which I've never tried before. So this was super fun and I'm really excited to share this with you because a lot of this stuff blew my mind. So let's get started. First things, we've got Core Watercolor, there we go, uh, Ground. So if you don't know what Ground is, Ground is a, Watercolor Ground is a paste that you can apply to a surface to use the watercolor media on. So this is the light dimensional ground. And then we have the cold press ground. So I will give you more information as I get to these products, but these are really, really, really cool. So next up, we have these ampersand aqua boards. There we go. So they gave me two of, oops, sorry for the, where for my lamp. They gave me two of each size. So I had two eight by tens and two five by sevens. Like I said, I've been playing with these products. So you might not see everything that they gave me. It's got those two fun things. They're really, they're really cool. Next, they gave me three packets of this Artistico Fabriano uh, paper. It is free of animal components, so it's vegan. They have extra white and traditional white, 300 GSM. There's two of each sheets and they're cold press, 100% cotton, cold press. So, doop doo. You can see here, they've got the traditional white here. You can see it's got this yellowish color to it. And then here's the extra white. So they gave me three of those. Next we have these Princeton Elite brushes. We have a three quarter inch wash, a one half inch angular, an eight round, and a two round. Do, 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 do. Try and break up that glare that's popping up. And lastly, we have this Hanamule watercolor sketchbook. Natural white watercolor paper featuring a fine grain structure on both the front and back sides. Suitable for all wet painting techniques. Acid free with a high longevity. So your 200 GSM, A5 is the size. 30 sheets or 60 pages. So this is the sketchbook. As you can see, I've already been working with it and it comes with this little bookmark so you can keep your place, which I always think is super fun. And a strap to keep it closed. It is hardbound. Really neat. So I am going to be reviewing these products, uh, testing them out. I did record uh, testing them out first impressions and I will be discussing further notes that I've noticed while playing with these products more. So, so. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to try is the core watercolor grounds. So I've got two, two different types of surfaces here. I've got this board, which uh, actually came with my printer. It was part of the, uh, oops, the packing. So when I, I kept them around because I was like, oh, look at these, I don't want them to go to waste. I'll just paint on them. This is my, my opportunity. So it's just, it's 
got paper on it, so I don't think it would be really watercolor friendly. And then I've got my uh, travelogue handbook sketchbook thingy, um, which I've had for for ages. So I'm going to paint on this as well. So I'm doing these ones first just because um, I'm going to let them dry overnight just to make sure. Taped. And we're going to do the cold press with this one. So, whoa. It's recommended to do, oh gosh, look at that. So I don't know if you guys can see the texture that's on this. Yeah, you can. Look at that cool texture. When my light isn't blinding. It's so cool. A uh, thin to thick coat. So I think it's just. Painting the ground onto the surfaces was pretty cool. I mean, I was painting on fabric and applying the ground to the fabric cover of the sketchbook. So I didn't know how it was going to be since I've only ever pretty much put stuff on paper. But it, it stuck really, really well. The texture surprised me. It was really, it was thick and it was very like pulpy. Almost like in school as kids when you do the homemade paper and you blend it and it's like really pulpy. It was almost like that, but a lot thicker. It wasn't watery, it was super cool. The, the light dimensional ground that I put on this board which is, like I said, it's a recycled board from my packaging for my printer that I got. I kept the boards because they're hard and I decided to apply it on there. I had to use my gouache tube that I had bought earlier that day as well because a, a brush wasn't applying it thick enough. It was just spreading it around. So I ended up using, a lot of people use a, a mixing spatula I didn't have one on hand, so I just used my gouache tube and spread it around and applied it in thicker layers in some spots. But it worked out. After applying them, I let them sit overnight to completely dry. And then brought it out to paint. I could not wait to paint these. I was so excited. I decided to do, I only recorded the cold press one just because I actually had a plan for this one. I didn't have a plan for the light dimensional one. I had no idea what I was going to do with it, so I didn't record it. I just recorded the cold press and was doing a landscape uh, using a reference photo of Norway. So a couple of notes about the different grounds that I've noticed from using them. So the cold press one, like I mentioned, it was very textured. I did have a problem adding details. It bleeds just a little bit. And, you know, I had to apply multiple layers to some spots, such as the house that I painted on here. I mean, it wasn't too bad getting details because the bleeding was minimal, but the texture, because of how textured it was, it wanted to go in places that I wasn't intending for it to go. I mean, this is definitely one of my, my favorite things to play with because I just painted on the fabric cover of my travel log sketchbook. And even today, you know, weeks later, it being on the ground, it being sitting on my desk, uh, I've had it buried under piles of paper and other sketchbooks. I think I've used this sketchbook a couple of times since I painted it, but still, like, it has not faded at all. I didn't put any kind of a um, 
varnish over it or didn't use any kind of a primer, nothing. I just slapped that texture down, that ground down, and it has held up really, really, really well. Still so pretty. Still one of my favorite things to look at. In regards to the light dimensional ground, I, I need to give this another chance because I had one problem with it and the only problem that I really had was that it bleeds. But I, like I said, I didn't have anything planned with it. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I sat there staring at it for a good 10 minutes before I was like, meh, I'll paint an animal. And I did. I painted a fox. You can see it on my Instagram. And I didn't... I, I could not get any details on it. It bled so much. I even tried to use gouache to try and get like little details for little black parts on the fox. Couldn't do it. However, the colors are ridiculously vibrant. Like the background was blue and green and it was so bright, so vibrant. I applied a few layers, which is great that you can layer it and it doesn't um, absorb back up. It doesn't lift up the paint at all, which makes it even brighter. So that was really cool. The textures that you can do, I didn't, I feel like I didn't use it to its full potential. I just slapped some stuff down with a gouache tube and rolled with it. But I mean, looking up videos of how to use it, I've seen some really cool things. So if you practice with it, which is something I need to do, there wasn't a whole lot in the tube. There is, I still have some to play with, but it's, it was pretty neat to see just how you can, um, roll, well, how you can use the texture to work with you with your painting. Here's some little, as they call it, peel porn. Yeah, it really worked, because looking at this now, it is a little, you could tell that it's, you know, layered on the book. Oh, look at it. It's so pretty. Like, I was in love with it when I did it. I'm still still in love with it. It's so cool. I would definitely give this stuff a uh, 10 out of 10. I'm showing you how it's a little raised, but it's so cool. So next in our little test list is this aqua board. It is a five inch by seven inch. So it's right up my alley for size. I always like smaller ones. I've got the bigger ones, but I always like to do a small surface. So let's see here. Acid free, my camera would Focus, there we go. Acid-free textured clay surface absorbs watercolors like a fine paper. Watercolors on aquaboard can be sealed and framed without glass, keeping colors and te textures true to life. That's cool. on it. I think cold press, that's cool. Alright, I don't know why my camera keeps not focusing, so I am going to do this and this is oh, informational pamphlet. Informational pamphlet. So different ones that they've got, Bayboard, uh, Gesso, 
Hard scratch pastel. Aqua. That's cool for different medias. Alright, put that to the side. So I'm going to sketch something out on here and then be back to start painting it. So this painting actually went pretty quickly for me. Considering I'd never I've never used an artboard before. Um, an aqua board or any kind of board. I've never painted on a board before, only canvas. So one thing, when I first started, I'm just using a straight from the uh, pan pink. And as I was painting it, so you could see how pink it was on the paper, the color that I used, the aqua board changes the paint a little bit to give it kind of a yellowish tinge. So it it changes it. And it was driving me crazy. I thought I was I was going nuts. And so the the less water you use, the more it stays to its true color, but once you start to water it down, it adds that yellowy color to it. So I ended up just adding some yellow to it anyways because I, I like the way that it was changing it once I realized I wasn't crazy. So that's what I did. I really like the aqua board because I was able to put a big wash over it very easily and with minimal streaking like you can see where my brush strokes are because I was just moving so quickly and wasn't giving it ample time to dry before layering it. It, it does dry pretty quickly, which was shocking, but I was working so fast. It, I was a little bit faster than it's drying time, but it does, it does dry very quickly. And you are, you are, you're able to layer many times and still blend things into previous layers, which was really cool. It didn't bleed at all, which I loved. little bird and the colors come out pretty bright on on this too I gotta say it's so cool when you're so used to painting on paper and like the colors don't actually pop up as bright as you want them to and so you end up painting on different surfaces and you're just blown away like with the watercolor ground the light dimension or the cold press it was like painting on cold press paper. So it's about what you expect. The light dimensional, holy brightness. Bright colors. It was really cool. The aqua board, I went with like a pastel y sort of uh, palette. But I mean, they're pretty bright. It's a cold press texture which I'm, I'm a huge fan of cold press, bleh, cold press textures for my paper and my surfaces. I just, I love, I love a texture. Hot press, that smooth texture always throws me off, but it's a cold press texture. It's a clay surface, so it's actually clay that you're painting on. And one thing that I thought was really cool is that you could just put like a seal over this and display it somewhere. That's it. You don't need to frame it or anything. Like it's just slap some sealant on there and then put it up on like a shelf or figure out a way to hang it on the wall. And I thought that was really cool. I'm probably gonna have to do that with this one. And there's my finished little bird painted on the aqua board. So cute. Alright, next on our testing list, we have the Hanamule watercolor book. So, again, natural white watercolor paper featuring a fine grained, oops, sorry, fine grained structure on both the front and back sides, suitable for all the wet paint, all the wet painting techniques, acid free and with a high longevity. 200 GSM, A5 size, 
30 sheets or 60 pages. So, yeah, let's break into this. And let's, uh, let's start testing it out, yeah? 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 My nails are uh, not working with me. Okay. Enough child's play. Already you could tell from the packaging that it had a kind of fabric-y texture to it. And the strap to it, closed. That feels, that feels nice. Huh. Should I, should I leave the cover as it is or should I put like a sticker on it? Or, or should I use my new watercolor ground and, you know, paint on it? Let me know what you guys think. Comment below. It's got their little logo on it. Little, little rooster. All right. Let's, oh man, I've been wanting one of these sketchbooks, like I said, for a while, so let's test it. Oh. Guys, I think I just broke the spine. Some uh, pretty nice paper. Oh, I crushed that spot. It feels really nice. It's not as thick as most watercolor paper, so we'll see how it does with some washes of watercolor, because I like to do big washes and little details, so we'll see. We'll see. Alright, we're gonna leave this initial page blank. We're gonna work right here. And we can test both sides. I was so excited when I got this in my goodie bag because I was about to finish my mixed media sketchbook and this has been the Hanamule watercolor sketchbook has been on my list for a while of sketchbooks to try out. And so I finally got to. And I gotta say, I am in love with this sketchbook. I'm still using it. I am a good, probably fourth of the way through it. So I was testing out to see how it did on washes, how colors appeared on it. There was a little tiny bit of warping you can see there, but in every single paper that I've used, uh, especially in sketchbooks, uh, sketchbook paper always warps a bit. I tested it out with some washes and then I decided to do a full illustration to see how it handles with layering, um, lots of wet paint on there and the fact that I work with mixed medias how it handled mixed medias different medias it's like colored pencils uh, gouache as well as watercolors Fun fact, I love red pandas. Anytime I go to the zoo, I freak out and squeal like a three-year-old when I see them. I don't think I've ever drawn or painted one though before this. Can't recall ever doing it, but I love them.
Okay, I've been using this this sketchbook for many things. I haven't tested it out as much as I I know I can. Any second now, my camera is going to die. Because I was not paying attention to the battery of my camera. Yep. And there's the finished piece. Look at the texture. I love that you can see the texture. I do love the texture of this. And it handles mixed medias very well. Last but not least, the Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper, cold pressed, and my Princeton Elite brushes. And then my usual thumbs up. So when I painted these, um, I did the, the different brushes as different colors, just so you could tell them apart and which one is which. So like the yellow one is the wash brush and I've been wanting a, a wash brush for a while because I've never never had one before and I use this thing so much I use my wash brush it's I since I got these I've only used these brushes and I think I've like maybe thrown one or two in since just because I couldn't find one of them but I've only used these and I, I am in love with them. Uh, my wash brush is my second most used one. The red paint that you saw there was the shader brush, the angular shader. I've used that one quite a bit. The green is the eight round, which is my favorite one out of the four. I've been using that puppy for everything. I can get thicker washes. It holds a lot of water. It is the closest thing that I have had to a Oh, what are they called? Quill brush. I've always wanted a quill brush and always wanted to play with a quill brush because I like that you can do big washes as well as detail work, which is why I love the eight so much because you can get details and then do washes. With the blue paint, I used the two round, which I use to get things that my eight is too big for, which isn't much, but I still use that one quite a bit. So I have done paintings using this paper already. Uh, here is a silky hen that was requested by people on Instagram, as well as a cassowary and a shell, which was part of watercolor month. It was two prompts that I combined, which I believe was rainforest and the beach, possibly. So we have a cassowary and a shell. Love the paper, was able to do lots and lots of layering with it without it lifting up the paint at all. Like I always hear that you can judge the quality of watercolor paper based on whether or not it keeps paints on it or if you're able to lift it off. So with this, I there was no lifting. The paint, once it dried, it stayed right there. It didn't, you know, re-wet and warp or bleed or anything like that. So I was able to add multiple layers onto the silky hen and especially onto the cassowary and it was magical. Oh my gosh. This is probably my new favorite paper on the planet that I have tried so far. So here I am painting 
um, to see if it lifts up at all, which it didn't. No, no, because this stuff is this stuff is good. Playing with this paper was fun, and I love these brushes. They they hold their shape, which I'll show you here in a second. They still keep their shape, and I I use my brushes a lot. I do take care of them. I do have a cleaner, and I do clean them uh, possibly once a week. No bristles came out. All the hair stayed where it's supposed to. I do like that there's no paint. They're not covered with paint, so there's no chipping. They're just, they're soft. I absolutely love my new Princeton Elite brushes, and I just love this paper. It's magnificent. So those are all of the products. Those are all of the things that I have noticed and taken note of while playing with them. Uh, the ones I've definitely been using the most have been the sketchbook and the paint brushes. I pretty much haven't used any other brushes aside from these since getting them for all of my paintings. So thank you to Mining our art supply in Denver for sending me home with all of these products to try. It was so fun and I really enjoyed it and I was very happy to do so. Very happy. Super ridiculously giddy. So, all right. Well, thank you for hanging out with me while I did that very long video of all of these products. I hope you guys have the chance to try them out yourselves. They're, I, they're all pretty impressive, pretty fun. So if you do, let me know what you think and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.